Good morning, and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. I'm Harold Herring, and that's my fine wife, Beth. Well, honey, today is the 235th day of 2019. Wow. Otherwise known as Friday, August 23rd. Hmm. A couple of questions came to mind as I put my fingers to the keyboard. In fact, one of these questions is straight from the throne room of God. Here it is. What are you going to do for these next 130 days? Think about that. Mm. If you get nothing else from this call, we want you to get this. What you've done in the previous 235 days of 2019 will not determine what you accomplish in the next 130 days unless you make it so. One more thing. What you've done in the previous 235 days of 2019 will not determine, by any stretch of the imagination, it will not determine what you can accomplish in the next 130 days. Think about what we just shared. Your future future is in front of you. Our prayer for everyone on these calls is that since January 1st is for 2020. 2019, then 2020, to be the greatest years of your life. From personal experience, we can tell you some totally unexpected and unwelcome things happened to us this year. But we've not looked back, questioned why, or lost focus on the future. Because God can always change things around. Absolutely. Our prayer is for God to be glorified and the devil terrified everything we encounter during these days, the days of our lives. So here's another question. Did you set goals this year? Or did you make New Year's resolutions? If so, what progress have you made in achieving these goals? It's time for a realistic view of where you are, what you're doing, where you're going, and who you're talking with. This is not the time to be making excuses about why you haven't done this or that. This is the time to pause, reflect, and redirect. And the point of it is, is you still have 130 days to go, right? That's it. This is something to think about. First, let's just do a brief review of our previous 235 days activities. The first key is to maximizing the potential of the next 130 but we need to discover what God has to say about our future. The second key would be to develop a daily plan for the next 130 days. Refuse to take any day for granted. The third key would be to believe there are no limitations to what you can achieve. I had a friend make me a sign one time, it's a cross stitch little thing that says, what would you do tomorrow if you knew you couldn't fail? The fourth key is to create a Rich Thoughts confession that will empower your 130-day plan. Hallelujah. And the fifth key is to monitor the plan that you've created. You must inspect what you expect to prevent the defects and then change things around if you need them. Sixth key is to praise God on a daily basis for the progress that you're making. And the seventh key is to never give up never give in and never back down from the things that God stirs in your spirit to do. You know, honey, the only limitations that we face are self-deceiving, self-imposed, self-sustaining, and self-maintained. In other words, you, yourself, are the only possible reason or person that can hold you back from achieving what God wants you to do in the next 130 days. Now, we want to share with you seven suggestions on how to make 2019, the remainder of it, the most successful year of your life. Yes, there's plenty of time to do that. Number one, tonight. Tonight. If we don't have a plan for tomorrow, it will have a plan for us. Proverbs 21.5, 21.5, New Living Translation. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. The way to avoid chaos and poverty in our lives 
in the lives of those we love is to plan our work and work our plan. Tonight, we want to encourage you to create a to-do list, the things you plan to accomplish tomorrow. List them by priorities based on your goals. Your daily to-do list should be a divine reflection of the things that God has called you to accomplish in your life. And when you think about it, tonight, Friday, can take a few minutes to make this, and then Saturday, start out fresh. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Hallelujah. A to-do list brings your future into your present. That's a good one right there. Your to-do list should include these five keys. First, your list should only include things that are scripturally acceptable for you to accomplish. Second, your to-do list should reflect daily tasks in accomplishing your goals. Third, your to-do list should always include tasks for your personal, <clears throat> spiritual growth and family development. Fourth, your to-do list should be satisfying because of the things it will allow you to accomplish and or eliminate from your, from your priorities or goals. Fifth and finally, an effective divine to-do list should make sure that you're doing everything decently and in order. It's also important to review your list frequently during the day. Mark off tasks that have been accomplished and add new ones as needed or they occur to you. Proverbs 6 4, 6 4, New Living Translation. Don't put it off, do it now. Don't rest until you do. The most difficult part of any assignment or journey is the first step. Don't let the enemy of your success keep you from organizing your priorities in your life. <clears throat> Number one was today. Number two is tomorrow. <clears throat> the seeds you're going to be sowing tonight will bring a harvest tomorrow. You need to make a note that tonight after work, if you're working today, to be doing this. You need to create a nightly confession about the next day, being the best day of your life. Now, you might say, Heavenly Father, I thank you, and you put in the date of whatever day it's going to be. It will be the greatest day of my life, a day filled with previously unknown opportunities, untried potential, divine connections, revelatory insights, supernatural appointments, and the ability to think beyond my imagination. My desire is for you to be glorified in everything I do, and then you name that day. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. For instance, if you're doing that tomorrow, then you'd make this confession for Saturday, mm -hmm. which would be Saturday, you know, August 24th. That's right. So feel free to adapt this confession to your own particular situation. If you're battling an attack in your health, weave that scripture exhortation on healing. It's also important to remember that we speak to those things that are not as though they were. Yes. In Romans 4, 17, Romans 4, verse 17, this in the classic Amplified Bible, we have this directive. It says, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He was appointed our father, we're talking about Abraham here, in the sight of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and speaks to the non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. Powerful scripture. Your nightly confession should be about who you want to become, not who you are. Begin to see yourself as God sees you and you will eventually become how he sees you. Wow, that's good. Don't give up, and you will change. That's good. Number three, today. Begin your day with something that motivates you. For Bev and I, we're motivated by music in the mornings. Songs like... Uh, Amen to that. <laughs> wow. Just, We've got a bunch of them. We do. Just point. keep praising his name. Yep. Oh, happy day, this joy I have. Hallelujah. So There's many. So many good Raise ones. a hallelujah. Yep. Amen. Lots of them. And as you look in the mirror each day, have a conversation with yourself. And for some of you, this might be new, but I assure you, 
It'll be life changing. There are other people who can and will motivate you. But unfortunately, sometimes those words flee or fail at the first sign of trouble. Remember, if you're motivating yourself, your thoughts and words will not only linger, but will strengthen you through every adversity. This is not to be confused with your confession each night before you go to bed. They have separate functions. For instance, consider this. Now, here's a suggested confession for you each morning, but make it make it your own. Make it your own. Good morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look at yourself and say your name. That's exactly right. <laughs> Good morning, Maya. Do you realize that this is a day the Lord made just for you? Get excited about your possibilities. Purpose in your heart to maximize your time and make at least one divine connection today. Don't let anything or anyone break your focus off the things that you have determined to achieve today. You have everything you need to do everything God has called you to do. As you journey through this day, remember you are energized by the greatest power source of all, the Holy Spirit. It's okay, Maya. Go out there today, find solutions, and make a difference. Personalize that for yourself and kind of create it in your own words. Hallelujah. That is good. One last thing. When you look in the mirror, don't focus on your natural appearance, but rather recognize what God sees when he looks at you. Number four, dress your body and your mind. You know, many people, many people develop the habit of laying out the night before the clothes are going to wear the next day. Sometimes this can really eliminate a lot of indecision and ultimately a lot of frustration and the way the enemy likes to steal your time. If you're not sure what to wear, lay out a couple outfits. But it's a mistake to think that, hey, we're just picking on women here because men do it too. But here's what we know. The point is indecision is not an effective way to begin your day. Plus, the delay of one, you know, seeking the right direction on what to wear affects them and the ones waiting for them sometimes. Equally more and important, really, I would think almost a little more important, is planning how you dress your mind for that day. Come on now. Lay out the CDs or the teachings that <clears throat> maybe the Lord has um, laid on your heart or listen, you know, in your smartphone or another electronic toy. But don't settle for whatever happens to be airing on your commute on the radio. It needs to be a conscious decision on your part. So it is great to have it laid out, ready, and you just can, I mean, you can, you can learn a ton of stuff in a short period of time if you're doing it every day. Absolutely. Time after time. We have a partner, Lana from Houston. That's one of the best at this. Yeah. She really is. But you know what? We're not going to finish. No, we're not. Wow. But we'll finish it up, pick it up tomorrow. That's right. Go to HaroldHearing.com, check out this week's two-minute video. If you've been blessed by the teaching, at the top where it says, Soul Seed, just ask God what seed he'd have you sow. Do what he says, that's all we ever ask. And until tomorrow morning at 8.30 Eastern, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Bye-bye.